New spiritual advisor is Jim Wallace. Jim Wallace, who, like his last spiritual advisor, Jeremiah Wright, is a Marxist. Now, he's not going to call himself a Marxist anymore. No, no, no. He's very, very clever. He's advising the President of the United States, but listen to his words. Are you then calling for the redistribution of wealth in society? Absolutely. Without any hesitation. That's what the gospel is all about. He goes on to talk about the forced redistribution of wealth. Because when you just give, it's just not enough. The left will continue to claim that all I'm doing is spewing, uh, spewing hateful rhetoric. I, I don't care. I really don't. I, don't. I don't know anything about this man other than his words and his actions. What he actually believes. He might be a very nice man. I don't know. All I'm trying to do is show you these people in their own words. Not my words. In their own words. And then you decide. Does it matter? Back in a minute. I want you to, uh, I want you to heed the words of uh, Thomas Jefferson here for a second. Uh, words that changed my life. We're going to apply them. He applied them to religion. I'm going to apply them to everything. Above all things, when it comes to this, fix reason firmly in her seat and question the very existence of God, for he must rather honest questioning over blindfolded fear. Honest question. Fix reason in her seat. Okay? Here's the President of the United States. Here's a guy who is supposed to be so unbelievably brilliant. He is, he's probably the smartest guy. He's the guy who beat the Clinton political machine. He's the guy who won the Nobel Peace Prize. He's the brightest political mind to occupy the White House, some say, since this guy. Got it? Does anybody think he's a dummy? Because I don't. I think he's brilliant. You don't go to Harvard as a dummy. But yet, he expects us to believe that he went to this man's church and didn't realize the church was Marxist. And didn't know that this guy was a Marxist. Didn't know this guy was a radical. And so then he leaves and then he finds another spiritual advisor. Another Marxist. Just that. Is he this dumb to make the same mistake twice? Then, on the same day that this guy left the White House, remember him? He's the communist. On the same day, he appoints this man as our manufacturing czar, Ron Bloom. Ron Bloom is a guy who says the free market system is nonsense and Mao is pretty right about the barrel of the gun thing. One of his closest confidants, Andy Stern, most frequent visitor in the White House, head of SCIU, he says, workers of the world unite and share the wealth. Anita Dunn, the Mao fan, former communications director, the one who tried to take on Fox and destroy us, which, speaking of that, FCC, the diversity czar, Mark Lloyd, Venezuela. It was, what did he say? An important revolution in Venezuela. He also says there comes a time when people in America have to ask themselves who's going to step down so someone else can have a chance. I can't even see the house we were trying to restore. What are they building? Again, this is not hateful rhetoric. I'm not calling him, fan, uh, uh, calling him names. I'm laying out the facts. And please come with me. If we have a single thing wrong, a single thing wrong, I will correct it. I want to correct it. I have said before and I'll say again tonight, <sighs> Barack Obama, you have the phone number. You have the phone number. You say that nobody can, nobody can call you on this. Nobody has the facts. I've just spent 48 minutes and 41 seconds laying out the facts. Dispute them. Because it does matter. Marx or Madison. Marx can't fix the engine that Madison built. If I'm wrong, make the call.
The media can and will continue to ignore everything that we've talked about tonight. That's because they're not doing their job. But the media ignoring it doesn't change the fact that our country is fundamentally transforming. And our president has had his whole life inundated with communist and Marxist and socialist and his, his, his administration. He surrounded himself by it. So what do we do with this? Well, I have to tell you, I, um, I mean, quite honestly, I told my radio audience today, I, I'm a little surprised no one, because the facts are the facts. And I'm surprised a year and a half into this that no one in the media has had the courage to join me. But that's okay. I'm not going to make the difference, and the media's not going to make the difference. You are. So this is why I put this information on in my free email newsletter tomorrow. And you have to use this information in a non-argumentative way. You have to have you have to find people who will have a sincere discussion with. Um, you know, if your friends are just like, oh, well, you know, uh, fine, move on. When you find somebody that it will listen, ask them if they want a restoration of our country and the freedoms and the values and the principles like accountability and honesty and personal responsibility, a chance to succeed and a chance to fail. If they do, ask them. Do you, do you really believe that the government can run a program better than the private sector? They're going to say no. If they say yes, you say, really? Here's why there's a difference. If the private sector runs a program into the ground, it eventually goes out of business. But if the government runs it into the ground, the government never goes out of business until you do. And I don't know if you've seen the debt clock. But the debt is unsustainable. We're about to go out of business. People who are only playing political games will ask you, where were you when George Bush was spending? It doesn't matter. I'm here now. Where are you now? Everything you need to know about China. Will the green jobs market be exported there? What about the state of religion in China? How communist rule is forcing religious organizations underground? Plus, the domino effect. How China's economy impacts you. This month in Fusion Magazine. Go to glennbeck.com to order your copy now. Um, the hammer and the sickle. It was a sign of workers of the world unite, if I may quote Stalin and Andy Stern. But the hammer and the anvil is something entirely different. It came from Gandhi. He said, use truth as your anvil and nonviolence as your hammer. And anything that doesn't stand the test when brought to the anvil of truth, reject it. Join me at glennbeck.com from New York. Good night, America.